what if I were to tell you that I'm not going to speak anything about JavaScript and uh, I try to fool you by writing good words in uh, the funnel so that you all are lured over here. What would be your reaction for that? <laughs> so that's that's not true. Hello? Yep, fine. So that is not true. Um, HTML5 has evolved a lot and there are a lot of features in HTML5 which cannot be leveraged without the use of JavaScript APIs. So when you're talking about HTML5, it cannot be that you're not talking about JavaScript. So uh, that is something that I'm also trying to attempt. WebRDC is a, one of the new features in HTML5 that a uh, lot of uh, organizations are working on. There are so many startups that have created products uh, that leverage WebRDC. Uh, although its support is limited in the browser, but I think uh, WebRDC is one of those cool HTML5 features that should be looked upon right now. And uh, yeah, I'm also using a character in this slideshow which is going to question me with this uh, uh, gun pointed at me. It is kind of representing a uh, representation of a developer's frustration or uh, questions that are not solved and he needs an uh, uh, answer for that. So. My next slide is uh, uh, exactly about that. Why am I speaking HTML5 in WebRDC, in JS4? So I have a couple of reasons for it. And uh, one of those reasons is this quote that I found on the internet. Uh, if something can be done in JavaScript, it will be eventually done in JavaScript. That's what we have seen. Whose law? Atwood's law, yes. OK, so sorry, I'll change that anon to Atwood. Uh, that's what we are seeing. You can see the posters. There is a robot flying over there, and I think that's also going to be attempted at this uh, conference. And our drone is going to be flying with the help of JavaScript. JavaScript is also there at your backend for image manipulation libraries. It's there in WebRDC. It's there in HTML5. You have some you will file access utilities. You have packaged applications using JavaScript. So this law is very, very true. That's what we have found. And uh, this is also applicable to the HTML5 applications. The next reason is uh, that very same. It is meaningless with, without JavaScript APIs. Um, most of the HTML5 features, if you see, you cannot use them without the JavaScript code. So that uh, pretty much explains why JavaScript at this conference. Then the, this is my favorite reason for um, speaking HTML5 at JS4. Um, in India, we have this practice to idolize. And uh, when it goes for HTML5, uh, this is the guy to Christian Hellman, not uh, Samuel Jackson. So <laughs> Christian Hellman is is the guy I'm uh, following since a long time. He has done a lot of uh, R&D, and um, I would say he's the true evangelist on HTML5. I have been following his blog. In fact, one of my demos at the end of this slideshow is inspired from his uh, face to gif uh, blog post. So these are the reasons why I'm speaking HTML5 at js And now, why HTML5? So WebRTC is, again, one of the features of HTML5, but uh, a lot of people question this. So we, you have internet, you have very good middleware. Um, you have a uh, lot of algorithms that process data and give the output in the, into the front end. So uh, when you want to access the internet, the data is easily available because a lot of intelligence has been gone into the back end, and you are uh, ready to consume the data. But what about the front end? What about making the web as an application? So. Uh, most of the time, you'll find developers questioning, what is, what is, are you, you're a JavaScript developer, UI developer, HTML5 developer, what is this? So what do you do, actually? So as an HTML5 developer, we enable features that make your front end look awesome, that make your uh, application more consumable, more accessible at devices, uh, at, across platforms. And uh, that is the reason to this question. So if you want these things and features, obviously, there's no other way. Backend cannot help you. It, there has, uh, the platform has to be evolved enough so that a lot of features are supported. Uh, right now we have features wherein uh, you have, for example, an online pen drive wherein you can uh, drag drop folders from your uh, desktop or OS into the browser and they are, get uploaded into the uh, online uh, cloud storage services, for example, Dra Dropbox. Or uh, you have a canvas in which you can paint. So these things can be enabled when the uh, browser is powerful enough, when the user has this ability to do this stuff into the browser. If you want to know more, there are two slides that I have uh, prepared for this. So one is this HTML5 and the power. Uh, think about this very common idea. When you want to communicate, so WebRTC is about communication and uh, uh, video sharing and collaboration. So 
while doing this before HTML5, or for for that matter, doing anything which is you know kind of cool in the browser before HTML5, what we need to do, we need to install applications on our desktop devices, on mobile phones. So if you want to Skype communicate, then Skype has to be installed on your iPhones. Uh, Skype has to be installed on your uh, Android devices. But uh, not, uh, now think about this idea. Skype is one software. Then for video playing and uh, music playing, you have other software. So don't you think there is a common software which is available on, on the devices um, which connect to internet and have a user interface? What is that common software? Internet Explorer. <laughs> you can say browser. Browser is that common software. So why not give enough power to the browser itself so that um, it could serve as a platform wherein we could do all the stuff without the headache of installing plugins, without the headache of installing other applications, without the headache of maintaining those applications and plugin, updating them, and all the stuff. So the power that is given to the browser today is HTML5. It com encompasses multiple features. So I have tried to sum that up into one slide. So these are the eight features, eight core groups of uh, HTML5 features that are grouped by W3C. A lot of people think that CSS3 is a separate thing. No, it's not. CSS3 specifications are under HTML5. So you have semantics, uh, which is for better code structure, new tags, and all introduced in HTML5. Then you have CSS3, flexible layouts, you have multimedia, uh, playing ability to play natively the videos and uh, audios. Then you have graphics in 3D, WebGL is part of graphics in 3D. You have device access, like geolocation, gyrometers, uh, other sensors. You have performance. So um, in performance, you might be knowing uh, web workers have come, uh, which, uh, in which you can spawn a new thread into, uh, from your browser. And you know all the heavy weight, uh, weightlifting from JavaScript, you can transfer to that and communicate with them. Then you have offline and storage. It also includes uh, app manifest and cache, other than local storage and session storage. So in which you can actually, for example, if you have tried to play Angry Birds game into the browser, only the first time the video will be loaded where the pigs are stealing the eggs from Angry Birds. Next time it is not downloaded from the internet. It is stored in your application. Then connectivity is the hottest part. It enables uh, web sockets and WebRTC. WebRTC is part of the connectivity suite, and that's what we are going to look at this slide. So let's see what is WebRTC, web real-time communication. So according to me, there's a very plain definition to WebRTC. It's communication inside the browser without plugins. It's HTML5 enabled communication, and but uh, the support for it is very limited. Only these two browsers, Chrome and Firefox, uh, support WebRTC on a full full basis. A lot of people say that we support WebRTC, but actually they just support getting your uh, audio and video feeds, um, nothing else other than that. So the only true browsers supporting WebRTC is uh, Google Chrome and Firefox. And uh, you also have frameworks, but there are no polyfills for WebRTC. So if you find that there are polyfills for WebRTC on internet, don't get confused. They're just frameworks. These frameworks take care of implementing WebRTC features in a common way so that you won't have to uh, care for browser differences only for Chrome and Firefox. These frameworks do not enable WebRTC on IE or other browsers. So let's see. So this is the main question we want to ask. Uh, where is JavaScript in all this? Uh, the main three tasks that WebRTC enabled browser is supposed to do it. First is capture your stream and uh, from your local devices. Next is sharing your stream with the peers, which is uh, enabled using peer connection. And then um, sharing data through the same channel. So the highlighted objects are those, uh, in the JavaScript uh, objects which are taking care of that. And I have a sample code for all of all the three of them and famous internet demos also. So this is the way. Very plain and simple code. If I, I think you are able with the black color, right? So, with only this much of code, you can access users' camera and audio, uh, camera and mic. Once you enable the permission, that stream is the live stream which is being shared from your uh, browser is actually being shown to you. We can we can uh, very much create a DOM element and simply append that stream into the DOM element. So, this slide pretty much explains that. Then you have. Uh, a uh, very famous uh, internet app application called Webcam Toy, which is a, a huge hit now. A lot of people are accessing this. This is getting a mul I mean, millions of hits, and people are uh, making faces, animation out of their uh, own recordings. So, what this uh, this Webcam Toy works on get user media, but they are using Flash for uh, putting the effects. Other than that, everything is HTML5. Then you have peer connection. Peer connection enables uh, the stream which you have captured using get user media can be shared across. Uh, 
you know, P2P. So once you connect to other client using some server, and then uh, with that client, if you establish a good connection, which is, and say that uh, peer to peer is enabled at my side, what about you? If it is enabled your, at your side also, you can very well uh, share streams between each other without the need of any additional server. So this this transfer is very fast, and uh, you don't have to rely on other web services for you know kind of media transfer. So peer connection uh, takes care of that, and that is also available as a JavaScript API into your uh, JavaScript code. Then you have, uh, I have tried to build a demo icebreaker which uses that peer connection API. If internet is fast enough, we'll be able to see what happens in this demo. And then you have communicating data. On the same channel on which you uh, transfer the stream and uh, communicate it peer to peer, you transfer videos peer to peer. If you can transfer videos, you can also transfer data. That is uh, very, very uh, uh, simple. You can see the code is also very simple in the same channel. Just you have to enable a flag, RTP data channel is true, and then you can send binary as well as uh, string-based data, and the objects representing are here. So there are. there's one more famous application on the internet for um, data sharing, which is ShareFest. This is also getting a million of, uh, millions of hits um, you know, almost on a daily basis. What happens here is you, you can open ShareFest, drag drop files into it, automatically an ID is generated. This ID you share with, uh, with someone else. If that person, uh, if your other friend is also hitting the same ShareFest.url and that uh, same ID, which has been generated from your dragging dropping file, he will be able to download that file peer to peer. No need of any other server between that. And so th what this means, this is similar to the airdrop feature you, which you use in MacBooks. So I think that is also peer to peer. So now this is enabled in the browser. So you don't need any other features other than a WebRTC supported browser for this. And these are the feature support for uh, the individual elements. So that's what I said. When, when a browser says that we are supporting WebRTC, it has to support all the three, get user media, RTC peer connection, and RTC data channel. The only browser that is supporting only get user media is Opera uh, uh, version 12. And there is no other browser that is even able to, you know, capable of capturing stream from your uh, laptop or your any device. So right now the development is very, very limited and focused to Chrome and Firefox. But if you see the development, the development is, uh, uh, there are some very cool stuff that have been done into the internet. When you see those applications, you can, you will feel the need to package them and install it as a native, native desktop application. So this would kind of replace the need for softwares like Skype or any other software which is going to, even the, uh, using RTC peer connection, you can also share the screen. So there are uh, ways for that. That's only enabled in Chrome. I think Firefox Nightly also has that feature. So we'll some, uh, see some cool demos at the end of the slideshow. Now, this is the architecture that I want to explain. Now, this is not the slide, actually. This is a common internet uh, image which you will get when you, found, when you Google WebRTC architecture. So since every other slideshow is using this image, that's why I also put it. But our guy is uh, angry for that. And so I have this a simple image that explains uh, how things work. So this is a model of WebRTC. You have a client uh, and the other client. Both has, uh, You have to assume that both support uh, WebRTC. Now what happens over here is there is always a need of a server to communicate, to enable uh, the first call of WebRTC. It's like making a phone call. So if Google Chrome wants to, or a person using Google Chrome wants to communicate to a person using Firefox, he has to rely on a server on which he will be first trying to discover the person using Firefox. So he will make a call to a server. That server is a common server. That is the site which you are building. That is an application which I have built. That server will also be accessible by the other client, and the other client will listen to that server. So if some one client connects to that server, the server will broadcast that somebody has connected to me on a particular room ID. And once that broadcast is over, the clients which are listening to the server Anybody from that client, uh, from, from those clients can connect to the server. So once this protocol is done, and you know that two clients are available, then SD, the media channel is set between these two. So now you don't need a channel other than uh, just ending the call. Now the data will be transferred from this channel and not the server. Otherwise, there is, what is the use of WebRTC? So this media channel is peer-to-peer, -peer, which means uh, the throughput of your data will be very high, and the data transfer latency will be very less, and uh, you know HD video you can share without any lags. So this is how it happens. What do you, what information do you send on signaling? First is you dis first is the discovery. Then what kind of video you want to share? Then you make a call offer. Then the client accepts the answer. When the answer is accepted, you 
uh, initiate the media connection. So, but then this is one of the ideal cases of WebRTC. This is not something which is you know readily available. This is the theoretical diagram. So, what happens actually is you always have a firewall if you are connecting from your uh, company or anywhere other place which is uh, you know behind a firewall. So, you'll ha always have a NAT enabled router. So, in that case, now NAT routers work in such a way that uh, they won't allow you to share P2P information. Otherwise, we would be hacking computer systems into companies. So, how do you communicate in such a scenario? So, there are uh, there is a technology called Stun. So, Stun is a kind of server which you can which a client one can hit and then find out what it is uh, how it is supposed to be located from the internet. And this data will be transferred to the second client which he wants to uh, communicate with the same previous channel, which is which can be anything, which can be even a Gmail message. So you can literally compose a message and in that you can write all the JSON data that so and so is my um, IP address. You can locate it uh, locate uh, on the internet and uh, so and so is the video stream that I want to share and he can read that Gmail message and start a connection that can also be true So in this scenario, we need a stun server that bypasses that first gives you your identification and then when it finds out that we both can actually uh, connect to the uh, you, Behind the firewalls it ena enables the same uh, media stream So this media stream is again peer-to-peer -peer, and then uh, we got back to our original situation wherein we can now share media on P2P stream. But then again, this is one of the ideal favor favorable solutions. Sometimes your routers are very, um, what we say, restrictive, and they are behind symmetric NATs. So what happens over here is, suppose your stun server replies. Uh, like, uh, there's one very, very famous stun server of Google. Everybody, for all the applications of uh, WebRTC and their demos, they are using this server. So when that server replies that you cannot actually com communicate, even though you are behind a firewall, in that case, we need a turn server. So turn is like uh, traversal using uh, relays around NAT. I think that is the acronym. So what it does is, it will allow you to communicate using WebRTC, but this, this will not be P2P. So now this is something which is similar to using Skype or internet or any other internet service. So now here, this is the last resort that we should adopt to because uh, stun has failed and the ideal case scenario has failed. So in this way, what will happen is when stun gives a false reply, so so and so is your IP address and protocol, but still you cannot be accessed over the internet because um, your uh, uh, NAT is symmetric. In that case, one more call will be made to the turn server and this turn server will be connected by the other client also. This turn server will catch all the data and uh, give uh, to the client and then client data it will transfer to the uh, main caller. But then again, this is very, very slow and this depends on HTTP connection and web and internet. Again, so there's no P2P over here and it becomes slow again. So. This is the last uh, scenario which we, we would be using. Now, all these terminologies, terminologies are very, very common in a uh, WebRTC talk. So I have tried to you know kind of uh, explain it in detail into uh, next slide. No. Okay, sorry, fine. So these are the acronyms. NAT is Network Address Translation, which is which stands for a firewall. So what it does is, uh, suppose you have uh, all the like ten clients communicate, communicate they, who want to communicate with each other, but they are all behind a firewall. So what this NAT does is, it uh, uh, it has one public address. So this public address can be accessed from other computers using NAT. Those who are also behind NAT, but then. Behind this public address, all the 10 clients have their uh, port numbers. So using this public address and the port number, the client can still be identified on the internet. Once this identification is done, this identification is sent to the other client with which the uh, communication is desired, and you can communicate with each other. So this is NAT. Then ICE is a framework interactive connectivity establishment. What it does is the, all the turn and uh, stun thing which uh, developers don't want to deal with, ICE takes care of that and you don't have, you just have to mention the stun and turn service and then ICE takes it from here. Uh, now ICE is a must framework which is supposed to be used uh, according to IEDF guidelines and on the application layer of your internet. ICE has to be implemented for a WebRTC connection, so it is not an opt-out feature. Stun is the server, turn is again a server. Signal channel is push-enabled communication channel. Why push enable? Because even though you can write uh, an email message in Gmail and send it to the other client, that message might not be real time because that is using internet. So if you have, even for the signaling, if you have a push enable server wherein uh, broadcast can be done, then it, it really becomes um, 
real time. So that makes more meaning. So signal channel is always preferred to be a push enabled channel. So you can install web sockets into your HTML5, uh, I mean, uh, into the server, and HTML5 browsers, both Chrome and Firefox support uh, WebRTC, and they both support web sockets also. So I think that would be easy. SDB is a session description protocol. What, is this, uh, what this means is whatever data you want to transfer to the next client, all this data has, there has to be some metadata related to it. So for example, the video which you want to share, so if your device is having an HD camera, but the uh, other client's device is not having an HD camera, so you might want to warn that uh, person that I'm going to send you an HD camera. So you will first set your local description that I, I have an HD camera, which uh, uh, 1920 by 1080 is my resolution, and this is the video I'm going to share with you. But then. If the client accepts it, it will set its remote description. If it doesn't accept, it will tell you that I'm not able to accept that much. And you can very well have hooks over there wherein you can decide what kind of resolution. We can agree upon the resolution of the video. You can agree upon the quality of the audio or the bitrate of the audio. You can agree upon which channel to be preferred or stun or turn. So all those information goes into signal channel. Again, signal channel is, goes, uh, signal channel is taken care by ICE. I mean, sorry, just before ICE uh, from the web server wherein this doesn't require web RTC. From SDP protocol, you first share what you want to go, uh, what you want to share. Once uh, your client accepts the request and sets all the remote description, then web RTC is uh, the, then web RTC comes into picture and you can actually share data. So that is SDP. Then uh, I think this uh, diagram would be easier to understand. So in case of uh, your ideal connection is failing, what peer A would do is it will hit. Uh, the most famous Google Stun server, and Google Stun server will reply with all the uh, the port number of the public uh, NAT, as well as the port number, uh, sorry, the IP address of the public NAT and the port number with which you are accessible. Assuming that both the cases are uh, favorable, Stun can relay, and then you can transfer data between uh, peer to peer. But if Stun fails, this is what happens. Stun gives you false data that you are not accessible, you are behind a symmetric NAT. In that case, you need to relay all the transfer of data and communication to a turn server, which is again slow, which is again uh, the old internet. So that is not favorable. Now, this is a simple uh, exchange flow. This is how it works. So I think this diagram is self-explanatory. So peer A makes a call to peer B and asks for the channel. Then peer A sends offer the SDP, so all those metadata like I want to share video, I want to share audio, I want to share a video with so and so resolution, the audio bitrate is going to be so much. Then uh, when the peer B accepts that, peer B creates an answer. Now the answer, now since assuming that it has been a success, channel needs to be established. So then ICE takes over and then ICE candidate is created, a peer A is created as an ICE candidate, peer B is also created as an ICE candidate. So ICE takes care whether to use turn or turn. First it will try with an ideal case. If ideal case is not possible, ideal case it will try when you are presenting on a on a local host. So one of the demos that I have built, I think because of the uh, slow internet, I'll have to present it on local host. So in that case, ICE tries uh, the ideal case. And then if that fails, ICE tries uh, stun. If that fails, ICE tries uh, turn. And this is how you connect. So I think this diagram might be more complex. So I, this is a simple diagram which I try to create. So I think this is this is more uh, easier to understand. PRA, all the signaling and stuff from an HTTP server. Then once it is true, PRA and PRB com communicate using ICE. So ICE is a framework that uh, is to be looked upon. Now, this pretty much covers my theoretical talk. So this is a demo which I want to showcase. And uh, I have hosted it on internet, but I don't think we'll be able to access it because I was trying. Um, and it's very slow. So we'll try both the things. First is, OK. Where is demo? Come on. Just give me a sec. Okay, so you go to this uh, URL I have. Let's try to see if you can also access this. Um, modulus. Okay. I think we don't, okay, we have it. So. What this application does is you, it enables you to communicate with one of your peer uh, while sharing your video. 
So, okay, everyone try to hit this URL and an ID like ABC or some unique identifier or one, two, three. And we'll see whether we can actually communicate with each other or not. And this would work only if, if you're not using internet for tweeting or other stuff. So please uh, shut down your services so that my demo is successful. Huh? We can't create for this, I think. It won't be redirected properly. Uh, for, again, for creating a tiny URL, I need internet. So, yep, I think it is accessible. Okay, but again, for connecting to my local server, you'll need to go through internet, right? You want me to run it on localhost? App is up. Okay, this is loaded for me. So I'll first show you the interface, how it works. I just share my screen and I get my video. Now, if you were to communicate to me, you would hit the same IP, which is this, or a, a number, one, two, three, two. So this is an identifier for you. Uh, when you hit the server with same ID, I, if you uh, check the code that is uh, being populated over here, I have a parameter in JavaScript where I'm seeing group equal to null. So group is null because I am the first client over here. As soon as you hit the server with the same identification number, it can be any random string, then the group becomes that n number and a channel is established between you two and you can communicate videos with each other. If you want, I can show you my own uh, stuff. So I will try to open a new console. Let's see if this is accessible. Yes. Uh, come on, load, load, load. Okay, anyways, you can try to access my local IP and see if this works. Um, just try to hit this. 192.168.130.244. Or, and then what do you want? So JS foo demo. Okay, and then I'm hitting the same using my own uh, localhost. Okay, into this browser, which is not incognito. So localhost eighty JS foo demo. Yes. Now let's see if we can actually see each other's video. This label sharing over here. Where is the other guy? This. Okay. I hate Windows. Where is my demo man? So, sorry for taking this time. No, I think this would be fine. I, the demo is up and running. Only the problem is... Bridge for what? This is advanced. This is dev, dev channel. So. So dev channel, even uh, the stable one supports the WebRTC and all this stuff. So I don't think there's a problem in that. Come on, man. So this actually works. What you can do is when you, you can go home and check on the internet. I have this URL shared. So you can deploy that application on using your node on your machine. And uh, I have tried to deploy it on Modulus, so Modulus is the only cloud server that supports WebSockets, and WebSockets is what I'm using for uh, push-enabled broadcast that some client has joined. So when you go to Modulus, that URL, try to use a unique identifier. Now, WebRTC has limitations, uh, like when I tried this with three, four connections, I was not able to see everyone's video, so I restricted it to two, two persons. Um, I really want to show this demo, I don't know how to, okay. Is 
this doesn't work. It needs internet. And internet is down. I think that would be my explanation. But OK, that is uh, it to it. I also have some demos uh, from the slideshow itself, which is on. Uh, so uh, on a final word, this, this demo works. You can uh, check uh, the URL that I have shared on your uh, home internet, which is faster. So let's assume that. And my slideshow is, OK, so this is the URL which you would like to go. Um, on modulus. So this is the application which you have to access from your uh, uh, other internet which is faster and then at the end of the string try to append something. In my Node.js code, so the repository is open on my GitHub. What I'm trying to achieve over here is whenever a server is calling this application at the end of that .NET, I'm trying to redirect to a new path name. So that path name is generated dynamically. Um, any ID, it can, you can use a random string to, or, or maybe the current date and time to generate that path name. And you share that path name with only the person with whom you want to communicate. Because that path name serves as a point of access. As long as the person is able to allow the connection, he will be able to, you both will be able to communicate with each other. So that is one restriction. Uh, that code I have not written yet, but every time you go, you have to manually type a path name which you want to choose. But I want to give that ability so that user can actually write. I want to, uh, for example, JS food demo channel I want to create. So there should be everyone, uh, everyone having a JS food demo access token key, they can hit the same URL and communicate with each other using WebRTC. So that is the idea of this product. It's still in development. It is. Uh, it was an attempt at a hackathon of uh, Tata Communications collaboration. Uh, and it did not win any prize because they also didn't work. So, anyways, I have some more demos for you which are into WebRTC. So, you, on my on the end, end of my slideshow, you have some uh, lot of R and D going on in the internet right now. Like Ericsson Labs is doing uh, very cool stuff using WebRTC. They have really stretched it to 3D communication and whatnot. Then you have, uh, these are the cool extras which are also famous on the internet. This is the demo that I was talking about which I have attempted from Christian Hellman's blog post. So whether this works or not, again, is depending on internet. So What it does is usually you sit and allow button and capture a screenshot anyways. And then you have one more demo over here. GIF recorder. So you could actually record a GIF animation from the playing video and embed it into a canvas, then export it into an image tag. That image you can save as a very good GIF. So that file will be actually a GIF file. So you can go and check the source code of this. It's very laggy. So this is the GIF created. So <laughs> using it visually. I think the animation is not good. So. Well, I'm using only five frames because uh, uh, there is a way to it. If you go to, uh, if you are using web, web, uh, web sockets and web workers, you could actually transfer the logic of encoding all the binary data into ASCII uh, to your web worker. And then from web worker, you can get the full compiled string. Then that you can uh, embed as an SRC to the image object. But all that encoding I'm doing in the browser itself, uh, the demo, which is face to jif from Christian Halbin's blog post is, uh, uh, it was very complex to understand for me, so I tried to play it simple, but that demo is even awesome. So I tried to mimic that demo. So uh, JavaScript has this B2A and A2B functions in, in your uh, browsers. I think it's only available in Chrome and Firefox again. So what it does is your binary data can be encoded into uh, uh, ASCII encoded base64 URI. Now ASCII encoded base64 URI always represent data. We have been using them into CSS inline icons and style sheets. So the same thing I'm doing here. That data I'm uh, encoding as an image tag. So you can check the source also of this. The JavaScript very, is very, these are the files that I'm using for uh, chief encoding and base64 and LZW transform. Then the main code is only this much. Getting user media, setting uh, the canvas width and height, laying the user media into the video element. Then this is the recording GIF parameters that I'm passing. Then on the click of the button when I start recording, what I usually do is, 
I have a set timeout interval. That interval uses the GIF encoder that I have downloaded. And uh, every frame on every, every whatever is the frame limit you want. So if you change it to 50, the browser will actually hang. And the size of your GIF will be 5 MB or 10 MB, I think more than that. So I change it to 5. And frame rate is the time interval on which you want to execute your, uh, um, I mean, what frames you want to add. For example, I have a, a animation at the end of this demo. So I have, I'm using a 300 milliseconds uh, time interval for that. So what is the interval that you want between two images that can be uh, encoded over here? And this is the library that I'm using. Then rest of the code is very pretty much plain JavaScript and just uh, there was an old code, but then I found that B2A function is readily available into uh, the browser. Simply I'm using that and embedding it. So this is how it works. So I think this pretty much uh, sums up my slideshow. What do I do now? So I, the real idea of uh, this uh, speaking WebRDC at JSFU was to um, kind of uh, let the developers be enthusiastic about HTML5, not think that HTML5 is something different than JavaScript. HTML5, most of the features are only enabled using JavaScript. and uh, there is a lot of intelligence that can be put into HTML5 application, which would allow you to make, you know, some awesome and cool demo stuff. So that, you know, this, this kinds of, uh, uh, you know, sets a path to which you don't want to, you want to install appli application for every uh, thing uh, you want to do on the internet. But most of the things you do on the internet are more than just sharing the data. And they can be very well allowed by the same platform which you are using, which is HTML5, and then there comes JavaScript, because most of those features will be able, you will be able to use only using JavaScript. So I think this completes my demo. Thank you. Any questions you can ask. I think this allows him to put his game back. Uh, hi, uh, a couple of questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, here, 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 first row. Okay. Uh, uh, a couple of questions. So, okay. first thing is, uh, is there a way to uh, dynamically adjust the frame rate? Because, you know, uh, most of the streaming solutions, they adapt to the network uh, connectivity over time, right? Like at the beginning of the video, the connection might be really good, but over time, if it deteriorates, you know, is, is there a way to adjust that? Okay, so frame rate, I think, since you are going to play that video into the video tag, uh, so frame rate is usually a, a, a feature that will be controlled by the browser. I think I don't think WebRTC has an option to control the frame rate. The frame rates you want to transfer to the client that can be controlled using the SDP protocol. They can be that. controlled dynamically. Like it should not be the same throughout the whole session. Um, I don't think you can control it dynamically. There's only one time call of an SDP protocol that goes from client A to client B, and uh, when this happens. That I mean, the protocol has been established, and you know what data you're sharing. Okay. So if you change it dynamically, you're kind of actually creating a new connection. You're kind of creating a new request to, for a new is, sharing of videos. Isn't that a drawback? So obviously, it's not compliant. But then that's what I mean. I I've not seen in, uh, features like dynamically changing a frame rate even in Skype. So that is something which people have not looked up to. Microsoft does it, but okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. So uh, Microsoft is doing doing good development. Actually, I was a Google fanboy, but now I see they are stretching the web too much, and now I have switched to loving Mozilla again because Mozilla is really doing some uh, cool work in HTML5. Okay. Uh, uh, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's something called smooth streaming in Microsoft. Smooth IS. streaming. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Second question is uh, so uh, uh, obviously there'll be some some kind of best practices to prevent man in the middle uh, kind of attacks. Like because yes, there are uh, not only man in the middle. Actually, all the security features have been uh, uh, standardized. So on on the third layer of uh, of your uh, protocols. IETF has made it mandatory that all this connection which is coming has to be uh, secure. Then on your application layer, it is a mandatory that user has to allow. Unless the user clicks on the allow button, you can never capture the video stream and audio stream. Then the peer-to-peer -peer data that is being transferred always has to be encrypted. Then there is one more, uh, uh, that SDP, SDP which you want to share, that is also always supposed to be uh, encrypted. If these four criteria are met, only then it is uh, allowed, otherwise it is not standard. In products. In production, I don't know, but in products, I know, because a lot of uh, websites have uh, come up 
which give you this service, peer-to-peer -peer service. And for example, you can check on uh, V-Line line suite of products, which a lot of companies are using, even Amazon is using, is uh, um, using the WebRDC. They were using some different channels, their own turn and uh, stunt server they had, but now they are switching back to WebRDC. Microsoft is considering to move to WebRDC. Hi, hello. Uh, so just really quickly, right? currently for cross-browser support, I'm using Flash for certain things. We're recording audio and transmitting things between different clients. So we're exploring WebRTC. We looked at the demos. Some related questions similar to what you mentioned, where with recording audio, okay. it still appears to still be a challenge to downsample it on the browser itself, where you, know, you still end up sending out files, I mean, uh, data which is fairly large. So if you could so, share some examples of where people are using it live in prod at this point, that would be useful. Um, I can share you the talkie.io URL. I don't know if I'll be able to open it because the internet is slow. If you can open that URL, you'll be able to find that they are using most of the things uh, which are kind of uh, feature sets of application which you install on your system. So you have people talking. You can actually record their uh, the session, whatever has happened. You can change their, I mean, downgrade and up upgrade their volumes. You can find out who is speaking. Uh, whenever somebody speaks using the Web Audio API, they are discovering that. So that demo is there on the internet. You can very well open talkie.io. It has everything. So it is one full-fledged pro product, provided that you are able to open it. Here. Yeah. 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 So I have a very simple use case when I want to access the uh, device webcam and capture the video and upload it, to, uh, upload the same to the server. Okay. Now, as far as I know, with the latest builds of uh, stable builds of uh, Chrome and uh, Mozilla, you can only access the device, but there is no standardization on the content type of the captured video based on which you can upload the data to the server. So I just want to know if the media stream APIs on the, all the related stuffs have evolved enough to support this capability also as of today. So the server is uh, something which is not being looked upon over here. The idea, uh, like the internet is full of demos of uh, get user media, but get user media is not the, uh, you can say, main feature. The real purpose of WebRDC is communication. And uh, there's no feature enabled in the browser wherein you can, like Chrome has enabled feature wherein you can uh, set a flag in get user media and you can capture the screen. So si these things are there. But people usually want to avoid the server, so the uploading part is not something which is being looked upon when you are using WebRDC. The communication part is being look, looked upon. So when a, a communication channel is established, people want to share that large amount of data among each other, and they don't want to store it. So storage has not come yet. Uh, but there has been a demo from a Google guy who has tried to record uh, an MP4 file from Get User Media and save it. You need for live streaming, so this is more than just like if, if at all uh, your stun is successful. Uh, example, uh, the last demo which you showed, uh, I consider that as more like a workaround or an act when you just capture the frames and without any audio capture, you played that, right? But if I want to have a real live streaming application, I need to capture the uh, that data and upload to the server from where I can broadcast it to the okay, different okay. clients. I, I got your question. So. This is the main reason for which we are using WebRDC is we want to prevent that, what you, are, what you are trying to say. That is something which we want to prevent. That is something which we are not looking at. We are looking at real capture of feed from your uh, um, application, from your hardware, and transferring it live on peer-to-peer. -peer. So that is my demo. It actually works. I can show you. It's not, it's not capturing the frames and all. It's the real, whatever you, it's not like I'm capturing the frames from your uh, camera. The camera is actually capturing the video and it is transferring right away. So when the channel is established, you will be able to see the real-time movements of the person who is involved on the other side, provided that it is, uh, the demo is works. Without stun server is something what I am doing already on local host that also doesn't seem to be working. So, Hello. But, uh, yeah, one server you need for establish, establishing the communication. For example, I cannot share data from localhost to localhost. So I can share data from localhost to my own IP address. Again, which is localhost, but browser needs to know that there are different IP addresses. And uh, Stern server will, be not, will not be involved, but at least the communication channel will be involved wherein you want to make a request to the client. You want to make a call offer. So that would always need a server. Oh, one question. Here. Here. 
when i am using a stern server provided by third party like google or something so uh, switching from um, stern to ten based on the restriction is it handled by the stern server or so we have to do by ourselves the reason why we use google stern server is it is able to identify you in the network behind your firewall most of the time it works but if your uh, uh, firewalls are very restrictive you can set up your own uh, turn server also so that is the case oh, also one more thing uh, when we are sharing the screen um, chrome will be showing stop sharing your screen window and all so hmm. that is outside the browser so uh, is the chrome providing an api to modify that chrome or like chrome provides a lot of apis for uh, which you know which can communicate with the the browser javascript thread which is going on so if suppose you did that so stop the frame stop something from being shared immediately that channel will be interrupted so even though the javascript was not called properly to end the call the other person would see a blank screen yeah okay hello <laughs> okay uh, the way web rtc is implemented it looks like you know uh, there's some kind of service which is being run by the browser which is available from a port it opens uh, your system to various security attacks so far was there any anything like that or what are the possibilities people have tried to make demos uh, which show that security is vulnerable in webrdc but those demos are restricted to the front end only the get user media wherein they are faking the user to click on something else and then trying to share the video but on the network layer wherein the data is being shared uh, ietf has proposed some standards so these browsers implement those standards obviously a hacker intelligent enough can hack that but there are uh, security levels considered on those standards so it usually works in a sandbox so browser doesn't give access to any other application to that sandbox and in that sandbox the things are as per the protocol standardized by ietf we have a question upstairs no he he, he asked the same question do we have someone there oh we have time for just one last question okay last question sorry already called uh, feel free to talk to him later there are plenty of links i'm sure there's material for everyone Hello. Uh, I just wanted to know whether um, uh, does WebRTC have any protocol for uh, screen shares? Uh, can can it get a f video feed from the screen and potentially enable screen shares, or is it only limited to webcams? Screen share, as of now, I don't know. I think in Mozilla Nightly builds they are trying to do that, but screen share is very much limited to uh, Google Chrome, wherein while passing the constraints to get user media, you can. pass a flag uh, use screen so if it is true only the google chrome build which supports screen sharing will try to capture your screen that's because google chrome when you install google chrome it installs other software also i mean other uh, abilities on your system with which it has lot of access to your system so you can actually share the screen before this webrdc came up google came up with an extension called uh, chrome remote web uh, remote desktop sharing that again was only using chrome so i think they are uh, using the same uh, features over here okay. thanks Okay. Just implementation of what? VNC. Yes, it is there. I think VNC add-on is there. Yes. Everybody, give a big round of applause for Om Shankar. That's a lot of stuff. Brilliant. Well done. Your battery is about to die. <laughs>